Let's get into the Word of God. I've got a lot to share with you again today. I think I'm going to be in teach mode, so I encourage you to take notes. If you've got a notebook, get it out and a pen. Get that thing ready. Get your lift pen out. Come on, lick the tip of it and get that thing ready to go. If you're doing it digital, warm up those thumbs. Come on, everybody, circular thumbs. Let's move them forward. Now let's move them backwards. All right, them fingers are getting ready to take some mad notes because I'm going to be flying. You might just want to put your uh, phone on picture mode so that you can study some of this, but um, we're in between series, and, and I wanted to have some time where the Lord would just speak, and as always, God's good, and he laid this message on my heart, and I'm going to share it with you this morning. We're going to start in Genesis chapter 1. It starts from the beginning, Genesis chapter 1. If you're there, go to, um, to Genesis 1. It's the first book of your Bible, so you can all find that one really easy. Um, if you're in the digital Bible, you don't even have to scroll down very far, Praise the Lord, right? It's not like looking for Ezra and you're like, where is that book in the middle of everything? And we're putting this thing on alphabetical mode. You know what I'm talking about? And, and, uh, so Genesis chapter 1, I'm reading out of NIV. It ver- starts in verse 31 and carries over to chapter 2 through 3. It says this. We know this story. We know this story well. It says, God saw all that he had made. And it was very good. For six days, he was creating and he saw all he made and he said it was very good. Say very good. Sometimes I think we could say it's bad or we could just say it's good. He said it's very good. And and, and there was evening and there was morning and that was the sixth day. Uh, Chapter two, thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Say all. Then God blessed the seventh day and he made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creation that he had done. This morning I want to preach a message to you called Give It a Rest. Come on, look at your neighbor right now and say, Give It a Rest. Come on, some of you have been wanting to say that all week. Look at your spouse and say, Give It a Rest. You're trying to help him right now, but you're letting out some like... Some, some, some thoughts that have been laying under the surface right there. Give it a rest, right? We are made as human beings in the image of God. Our God is not a God who needs rest. Our God is omnipotent. He's, he, he, he's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He, he does not need rest, yet in this scripture, he models for us something that we as human beings need. Anybody experience needing to tell someone in your household, give it a rest. Come on. Every parent who's got children under five should be throwing their hands up in the air. Oh, they're wonderful. They're beautiful. They're amazing human beings. But at times, you want to say, Give it a rest. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. I meant, could you quiet it down, <laughs> right? We've got little ones, and so if, if, if my wife and I are in the other room and we hear them playing, they play so well. But every once in a while, you just hear the screaming of their names, and as the screaming elevates, so does the blood pressure in my body begins to elevate. And so it starts with, Gianna, 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 Amia. You, know, you just want to yell from the downstairs because they're upstairs, and you want to say from downstairs, don't make me come up there, right? You know, I don't want to climb the steps, so I'm just trying to sound intimidating because maybe I could get the job done from down here and I'm being lazy and so I just hey give it a rest up there <laughs> you need some help I was talking to my wife about this I said what's the words you want to say give it a rest to and she's like the word mama <laughs> any mamas can relate mama 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 three girls mama 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 we can make a chorus out of it mama 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 and it's just hey, give it a rest give it a rest we now have them uh they want gum all the time can i have some gum can i have some gum bella's got gum I mean, I got gum. Where did she get her gum from? I don't know. I got gum from mama's purse. You're not supposed to be in mama's purse. I got gum. She got gum. Can I have gum now? Gum, gum. And it's, gum. where's the gum ending up? Is there, are you swallowing it? Is it on the bottom of the couch cushions? Where is the gum ending up? Why do we need so much gum? Because it's so cool to be three years old. Four years old. Give it a rest with the gum. 
We as human beings got to give it a rest. They're cute, and cute things still need to give it a rest. You could be, you could be good, and even you need rest. We're, I was watching the United States men's national team playing soccer. I'm following along with the women's team in the World Cup. Come on. They just beat the host nation of France. They're doing some things. Now, the men, I was watching them the other day because they've been terrible the last few years. And so I just want to see if they're getting any better. And the other day, they were wearing these jerseys. And my wife watches and she goes, that blue stripe on the back of their uh, jersey uh, really makes the shirt look odd. And I was like, oh, that's not uh, 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 because of the jersey. They actually nowadays have a hump back there because a lot of soccer players go to the next screen. They wear a tracker on them right now. And it looks something like this. They wear this little mini bra because on the back it's got a tracker tracking how many steps they take, how many miles they've run, if they're getting tired, their heartbeat rate, and all this other stuff because we've got all this analytics and information running through. We live in a generation of information. We've got so much information hitting us all the time. And so they actually track these things so they know what's going on uh, on the field, but also how much rest and recuperation they need afterward. See, athletes understand that they cannot continue to, to uh, operate and, and perform at their peak level unless they have rest. But sometimes I wonder, even if we're not athletes, if we all need to wear one of these little bras to wear around so that we got a tracker on us that will remind us every once in a while, you need rest too. We live in a generation and a time where you could just go, 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 go. If it's not work, it's family. If it's not family, uh, it, it's, 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 it's social media. If it's not social media, it's catching up with the DVR because I'm running out of space on my DVR and I need to be able to record the next thing that comes up. And so I've got to watch it so that I can delete it because I can't just delete things. I've got to watch all of it. And I've got to read the emails because if I wait all weekend long, I'm going to have 400,000 on Monday. And so I cannot stop on Sunday. I've got to continue to go, 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 go. See, this is what they say about science and sports. It says, we both, patients and professionals, often pay lip service to the importance of rest, while in practice, we are nearly ignoring it or even defying it. The number of cases where resting is actually treated like a meaningful strategy seems to be outnumbered 10 to 1, and I think it's true in life as well. We are, 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 are as Americans, as we're living here in information, we're trying to cram more and more into our seven days a week. We're trying to cram more and more into our 24 hours of the day. Maybe if I stay up 30 extra minutes, I can get a little bit more done. I can get this stuff done. Maybe if I cram some more, we need some rest. We need to give it a rest. Tell your neighbor, give it a rest. This is what Dorothy Bass said once in a, in a book. Americans need rest and they need to be reminded that they do not cause the grain to grow and that their greatest fulfillment does not come through the acquisition of material things. We get lost in this sometimes, not because we're bad people, but because we live in an information time where I've got 31 notifications on social media. What will they think of me if I don't reply or at least like every single one of them? And so just give me another 45 minutes, which turns into four hours so that I can just go through and make sure that I am uh, catching every single thing and then I'll flip over and see how my team's doing or turn on the TV. It's, it's just constant, constant, constant. We need rest. God didn't need rest, yet he was modeling it for us. In the book of Nehemiah, if you're unfamiliar with the account, it's a fascinating story. I love the book of Nehemiah, but in it, Nehemiah is just a man of God who hears that, his, the, that God's house, God's land is torn down and is desolate. So he gets permission from the king where he serves to go back and to rebuild it. And once he rebuilds the walls, he faces opposition, but he rebuilds the walls. He sets them all up and he says, you good? You're going to be blessed now. And he actually goes back to tell the king how things are going until he hears the report that things are falling apart once again in Israel. So he leaves the king and in Nehemiah chapter 13 it says that one of the first things Nehemiah does when he comes back is he starts observing that they have quit observing the Sabbath. All of a sudden, salespeople are selling on Sunday again. All of a sudden, they're working 24-7. They're grinding it out, trying to make a profit all the time. And Nehemiah says, in order to restore God's favor, in order to restore peace, in order for you to be healthy as a nation, you have to reinstitute the Sabbath. You need rest. You need to give it a rest. 
I know we're trying to work the, uh, the prophet, but you've got to give it a rest. Eugene Peterson says this, how can I lead people into the quiet place besides still waters if I am in perpetual motion? We have to stop sometimes and check ourselves off and check ourselves out and see, have I rested? Have I stopped carrying things, worrying about things, doing things? Isaiah 30 verse 15 says this. This is what the sovereign Lord says. The Holy One of Israel says this. In repentance and rest is your salvation. In quietness and trust, that's your strength. But what's the problem? You would have none of it. I'm trying to get you to rest. I'm trying to restore the quietness in your soul. I'm trying to restore the strength in your life, but you won't have none of it because you can't turn the work off, the phone off. You can't turn sometimes the TV off. We need the rest. It's like we have this amazingly polished sailboat and we can look all good and stuff and and that sailboat can be all polished and look right, but the problem is it is just sitting in the waters unless it has the wind of God blowing at the sails. Come on, if you want to cruise, if you want to go places, we've got to learn that at the end of the day, you can polish up that boat all you want, but at the end of the day, it's not about you on how to move forward. It's the rest you got to rest in the wind of God, the trust of God, the spirit of God. And we've got to learn to just sit and discover the truth of what a Sabbath really is. You know, about a decade ago, I read this incredible book called Sit, Walk, Stand by Watchman Nee. I highly recommend it. If you'd like to get it for yourself, you can scan that right there. It'll take you to an Amazon link. I think it's only $2.99, $3.99 on there. It's dirt cheap. It's kind of a smaller book. And Watchman Nee is a profound guy, uh, the way he writes. And I read this book, and the whole premise of it is the process of Christian maturity should start from a sit, a, a, a sit, a sit position and then it moves to a walk position, then a stand position. And, and he can break that down more. And maybe on another day I'll talk about it. But here's what I really gathered from it is in the beginning of it, he started with this Genesis account. And I, it was so revelatory that God worked for six days and he rested on the seventh. So you and I might assume as, as men and women, we are called to work six days and then rest on the seventh. But oh, wait a second. Which day was man created on? Help me out. Which day was man created on? Somebody say it. I'm I'm making it easy. Sixth day. On the sixth day, God rested on the seventh, which means he works for six days. Rests on the seventh. You and I were born into rest. You don't have to work to rest He gives you the opportunity to rest, and now I'm ready for some work. You know what I'm saying? It's not like uh, I've got to fix me, or I've got to do-ism, or I've got to get this all done, but he is constantly throughout Scripture trying to help us see that you need to give it a rest because you need to learn the trust on me. If you don't give it a rest, you're going to start depending on your own might, your own power, your own intellect, your own wisdom, your own degrees, your own ability to parent, your own ability to control, and you will get tired. And so if you choose to, if, if, if you will, will respect rest, then you will have the opportunity to lay down. But if you neglect rest, it will lay you down. You're going to find yourself in a hospital. You're going to find yourself in a, in a, in a, in a, a therapy session just because I need to learn to slow down and rest. I've been going, going, going as if all things depend on me. And the fact of the matter is it doesn't depend on me. It depends on him. I've got a God who's on the throne, and he can do amazing things. See, here's, here's just a few things that I think we need to do first, right? If, if, if we learn that men get to enter into rest first, we should be resting at the first of ourselves. Then here's just a few things that I think we can learn from. Number one is this, that we can rest at the first of the week. 
We, we rest at the first of the week. Let him have the first fruit of our week. We don't work six days long so that we can rest on the seventh, but instead we, we begin the week in rest. We, we take the day and we say, God, this is your day. You have made it. I'm going to keep it holy. There are things trying to, to, to come in on it and, and infringe on, on this day's territory. See, that's why scripture says you're going to have to fight the good fight for the true faith because we We've all got reasons to, to, to let Sunday get filled up. And I understand we live in a different culture. Maybe our employer requires us to work on a Sunday because they're trying to grind out profits all seven days long too. And that doesn't make them bad people. It's just that this is the area we live in. Go, 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 go all the way along. Burn, it, burn the candle at both ends. And, and so sometimes we have to do it. But will you find a Sabbath where you say, I'm going to rest on this day? You know, uh, uh, um, we, we do a lot of work on Sundays, and so a lot of times I try to just lay back on Monday. I don't answer so many texts, and I don't answer so many phone calls on Monday because I, too, have got to learn to rest. I've got to rest. See, see Leviticus 23.3 says this, there are six days when you may work. Go out and get it, boy. But the seventh day is a day of Sabbath rest. It's a day of sacred assembly. You are not to do any work. Wherever you live, it is a Sabbath to the Lord. I'm not trying to say that if you miss a Sunday, then you have messed it up. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that the Sabbath still has to have a place in our week. You understand what I'm saying? In our week, we've got to slow down and say, this time's not about me. This time's not about you. This time is about him because I need to rest and recharge in the goodness of the Lord. It was Jesus' routine to, to give the first of his week. It says in Luke 4, 16, that even Jesus went uh, to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. Come on. The Son of God needs to come sit down and learn. He actually learned uh, at rest. I'll, I'll share that later. It was also his disciples' routine. You would think if it wasn't important, Jesus wouldn't teach the disciples to continue on. But we learn in scriptures that in, in, in uh, Luke 23, 56, it says that though Jesus was crucified, if there was ever a time not to rest, it would be when Jesus was just now crucified. He died on, on Good Friday. And, and so the people of God wanted to hurry up and get Get him down off the cross so that they could get him in the tomb. Why? Because the Sabbath was coming. And this is what it says. It says, then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. His body is going to start breaking down and smelling, but we can't go embalm him today. We've got to rest. You get how tempting it would be? To, 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 to violate that and say, this week I'm going seven days a week. We'll get back to it next week. But he taught the disciples, look, even Acts 13 says this later on as the early church is growing. It says from Perga, they went on to Pisidian Antioch. On the Sabbath day, they entered the synagogue and they sat down. Come on, even the disciples decided, I'm going to church and I'm going to sit down down and I'm going to hear and it wasn't until after they heard the reading that the that the leader said hey y'all have anything to say and they're like okay well I, I, I could share as well but what does this mean to give God the first of the week it just simply means this honor the Sabbath and keep it holy this is one of the original Ten Commandments, and, and we don't have to be all religious and law-keeping today where it's like, well, Sunday and Sunday only, Sunday between 10 a.m. and No, 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 that's not, that's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is, if you don't give it a rest, it's going to make you rest. Why not rest in Him? Amen? Number two, the first of our salvation in the first of our salvation, as you enter into a new relationship with Jesus Christ, you do not have to enter into work. You do not have to repay the debt that Jesus paid for you. This is not about, he did something for me, so doggone it, I'm going to brew some coffee and do something for him. That's not what this is about. This is about first understanding that it was given to you, and you'll never repay it. Sit in it. In fact, 
Strap yourself to the seat because some of us will try to repay it. Ever had somebody pay for the bill? Come on, you sit at one of them tables and they're just all like, I got the bill. No, 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 I got the bill, brother. I got the bill. You know, I always chime in as if I'm going to do it because that sounds real gentlemanly. I got it. And they're like, no, I got it. It's like, nope, fair game. <laughs> hey, but, but you know, some of them are actually like, give me the bill. Give me the bill. Why? Why? Because it, it, it's, it, it makes me feel better about myself. It makes me feel better about our family. It makes me feel better. And, 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 and in a moment, sometimes we need to think that sometimes we can get religious with what we're doing because I'm doing things for God. God's proud with me. And he said, no, no, no. You could sit right there and I'm still proud with you. You can do nothing but believe in your salvation is secure. Right? We've got to learn to enter in to rest. Even look at Jesus at his young age. He entered Jesus' Sabbath when he was young. Come on, Luke 2, 46 says this. They found Jesus in the temple courts sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking questions. In other words, he entered as a young age into rest. I just need to learn. I just need to grow. I just need to know more and more. You're the son of God. You know God better than any of us. You know the father better than any of us. I enter into rest. But later it says in Mark 6, 2, that he moved to a place where when Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Come on. We don't spend our whole Christianity at rest. Come on. God says that we're called to go and tell the nations about Jesus Christ, but this is what I want to tell you, that you can enter into to rest. I'm so thankful for Mackenzie um, that she gave her life to Jesus. Um, I, I think it was in January or February, right at the launch of our church, she entered into a relationship with Jesus Christ, and, and we approached her. I might have even approached her. I was like, hey, come join us on Next Steps. It's how you get on our dream team. And I was thinking about just making sure she had good uh, uh, fellowship and relationships, and I should have known better. She's already around great people, but she said this, Pastor Drew, for a little bit, I just want to get my worship on and learn more. And I I was like, you know what, sister? That is the right move. Sit. Sit. Don't sit forever. You're not called to sit forever. You're not called to go to church forever. We're called to be living stones, but enter into a season of, you know what? I don't have to prove or work my salvation off. I'm good just worshiping him. Amen? Come on. But though Jesus worked, he Sabbathed often. So what we can do is we can often get in work mode or we can get into mature Christianity mode where we go, 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 go. But even Jesus Sabbathed often. It says in Matthew 14, that he says, immediately Jesus made the disciples leave. Y'all go ahead and get in the boat. I need to rest. And so he goes, uh, they go on ahead on the other side. And when he dismissed the crowd, he told the crowd, I love you. I would love to teach you forever, but I need to rest and I need to teach uh, my followers they're going to need to rest. And so y'all go away. Jesus, you're going to turn people away. Go away because I need to give it a rest. I need to spend some time with God. And see, th th this is a good model for us all that after he dismissed them, he went on a mountainside by himself to pray and to Sabbath with the Lord. The people came back and they said, we see you praying. Teach us how to pray. I hope as a pastor, one of the things that I can teach you is teach you how to pray. In other words, teach you how to rest. You're not in charge. You don't make the ship go round. You don't make the world go round. You're not the center of it all. I'm not the center of it all. We have all got to learn to rest in him. If not for God, if not for God, then God is the one who makes this thing happen. And so even on our dream team, our hope is that our, 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 uh, we, we launch with, with some people on our dream team and we're all serving together. But here, this dream team, we've got to rest too. You've got to allow us to say you're not serving this week because we want you to just sit and rest. Sleep in a little bit. Come with your spouse to church, right? Some of us love it. You know, that's my identity. No, your identity is being a son or daughter in Jesus Christ. And so we love what you, what you provide and what you bring, but I, I too will also sit down and rest. You're going to see more guest speakers. You're going you're gonna to see that my wife and I, we, we will go to a conference so that we can just sit and not do anything, not touch any buttons, not lead anybody, but just sit down and rest. Just hear the voice of God. God will stop us and, and make us rest because if we respect the rest, then you can lay yourself down. But if you neglect it, it will lay you down. We've got to learn to rest. Our goal is fulfillment 
but also sustainability. It's not sustainable if you go, 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 go. Uh, the keyboard player is going to uh, join me because there's a few more that I could go into, and, and, uh, but there, there's no time for it. But I'll say this, the first of your work, number three, the first of your work, we need to rest you can check out Numbers 15, 32 through 35, that it says that while the Israelites were in the wilderness, a man was found gathering wood on the Sabbath day. Those who found him gathering wood brought him to Moses and Aaron and the whole assembly, and they kept him in custody because it was not clear what should be done with him. Then the Lord said to Moses, the man must die, and the whole assembly must stone him outside the camp. They killed the man? The people of God killed the man. For working on the Sabbath. That sounds harsh. I told God that as I was studying. That's harsh. And then he said this. But really he was killing himself if he would continue to do that. If you continue to work, 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 work. i got to make a profit. i got to turn to buy. i got to make ends meet. Then, then if you will not rest, you're really killing yourself. Whether it's rocks from people or whether it's you're killing yourself. Ran into a guy not too long ago, just a few months back, who worked his butt off for the kingdom of God, but found himself in a hospital room because if you neglect it, it will force you to lay down, right? Another one is the first of your paycheck. That's what we do whenever we, we tithe is what we're doing is we're giving the first fruit away as in we are resting on this money. I'm going to rest in the trust that if I give it to you, even though I'm not trying to work it for my own ends, that I'm not trying to turn it for a profit, if I trust you that as I give you my first fruit, I am trusting that all the other, the, the other six days, the other 90%, you will make more happen with 90% than if I keep 100%. We give it a rest, right? Another one is the first of our marriage, right? Let him have a crack at it first, ladies and gentlemen. I know for me, I'm like, oh, I can fix this. And sometimes the Holy Spirit, oh, no, go, don't go in there. Don't go in there. Give it a rest. I'm like, no, 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 no. I know how to fix it. No, no, give it a rest. Sometimes we need to give it a rest in our marriage and just trust the Holy Spirit's better at doing it than me. I need to learn to rest for a few moments, for a few hours, for 24 hours. Let it rest, and let's come back to it then, right? Also, the first of your worries. Rest in your faith that God is on the throne and that he is on the throne of all my concerns. Jesus said, all you who are heavy laden and wearisome, come to me and I will give you. Come to me and I will give you. God wants to offer us rest. But so often we won't take it. So often we'll tell God in the happiest tone possible, in, 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 in a good-hearted mode, we'll say, I got it, God. I got, I'm your warrior. Come on, I can keep going. God says, no, 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 come to me. Because if you do, I'm going to sit you down. I'm going to lead you by green pastures and still water. I want to give your work, your worries, everything, a rest. Just hang with me. You know, um, communion, we're going to receive this today. If our hosts would just come and begin to pass it out, our, uh, they're going to be pass the buckets. And if you would, just take one of these real quickly. Uh, we'll do it as fast as we can. But as, as they pass it out and, and we get prepared for this, uh, one of the greatest things we can do in rest is receive communion. And, and the reason we do this is we stop all the doing. We stop all the toil and all the, all, all the energy and the effort. We stop all the sweating. We stop all the worrying. We stop all the thinking. Even right now, you could be worrying about what you're going to eat or what your family is going through and how you're going to get through it and, and, and how's he doing and how's she doing. And, and that's good. We can, we, can, we can enter back into that on Monday, but for right now, we're just going to stop and we're going to rest. Because as Jesus was about to be crucified, he wanted to teach his disciples something. He said this, sit down at a table. Let me feed you. And they said, okay, do we need to cook it? Do we need to prepare it? This is what he said. Now that you're at the table, let me let, me let you know something. That um, the body that you are going to receive, 
This is my body. Just peel back, if you've never done this before, just, just peel back the, the invisible top layer. And it's going to expose the bread. Jesus said this, he says, this is my body. Hands didn't prepare this. This is my body. I need you in a seated position. I need you to just rest for a moment. What about is what is about to happen, let's not be concerned with that. I'm doing this so that you understand how to rest, how to sit back in full confidence, faith, and trust in me. You're going to need to learn how to do this, he is saying. And so from time to time, you are going to have to sit down, pull out a piece of bread, go, you know what? I need to be reminded that I'm not the fix. I'm not the cure. I'm not the one who's going to make the world continue to go around. I'm just one other person in this whole thing. God's on the throne. And I need to be reminded, and he says this, this is my body which is about to be torn and beaten for you. I like to break it because Jesus' skin was broken for us as he bled. And he said, I'll do the work. You just rest, and this is how much you can do. Eat it and take me in. Right now, he says, this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's receive it together.